my next guest is known as the four-year-old superhero from Birmingham, Alabama, uh, whose superpower is feeding the homeless. Uh, he's on a mission to change the world one sandwich at a time. Take a look at his story. This is four-year-old Austin P. Ryan, seen as a local superhero who's trying to change the world and people one sandwich at a time. Would you like a sandwich? His superpower is to feed the homeless. When asked why he does it, his response is pretty simple. It's just the right thing to do. Oh, thank you, baby. You're welcome. Don't forget to show up. A pint-sized voice with a powerful message. Being the homeless is the highlight of my life. And maybe one day he'll be more than just a superhero. He'll actually be President Austin. Everybody, please welcome superhero President Austin. Let me tell you something. That's the fastest I've ever seen anybody come around the corner. He just put his chip foot up on there and this. <laughs> Austin, why is it important for you to, to show all this love? Because the world needs it. Everybody deserves to be loved. <laughs> Austin, how, how does it make you feel when you're helping out homeless people? It makes me feel great when I help the homeless. I feel like a real life superhero saving the day. Saving the day. Yeah, man. Austin, your dad is here. Where's your dad? Straight Hi ahead. Hi there. TJ, TJ, come on down and join us. Yeah, man, uh, Austin really loves feeding people and helping people. Wait, hold on, TJ, this is a little emotional for you, huh? Steve, before Austin came, about two weeks before he was born, I didn't have a job. I felt like giving up. But I saw you on TV and you said, it took me 38 years to get a chance. And today, I'm 38 years old with my son, talking to Steve Harvey about changing the world. And that, that inspired me to keep going, Steve. Yeah. So that's why I'm emotional about this whole thing. You know, man, you walk through life, man, you, you don't know who you affect. But if you never give up, if you never give up, you don't ever know what God can do for you if you keep giving up. <laughs> you find out exactly what he's capable of if you just don't give up. Austin likes traveling and going around and spending time feeding the homeless, so I'm gonna do everything I can to get him to 10 different cities and states to just spread love and just inspire people to keep doing what they what 10 doing. states? Man, what? What are you been doing? <laughs> Boy, Austin, what? 10 states? <laughs> well, Austin, we, we think what you're doing is great, man. So do our friends at Southwest Airlines. They teamed up with some other friends of mine at Choice Hotels to take care of all your hotel accommodations in each city on that 10-day tour. What a surprise. So Southwest Airlines is gonna fly y'all to each one of these cities, and then Comfort Inn is gonna put you up. But that's not all. We know that you also work with Church's Chicken to give food to the homeless. But now they wanna do something for you. You listening? Austin, they are donating Church's Chicken $5,000 to your Show Love Foundation. Wow. Wow. Now, got another surprise for you. As you know, we taping this show right here on the back lot of Universal Studios Hollywood, so I invited some special friends to help me out. So please welcome, from the Minions, Stuart and Tim. <laughs> Come on, you wanna go down here and meet them? Come on.
Come on, TJ. Get the other one to hug, Austin. <laughs> so, Dominions and I, we're sending you to Universal Studios Hollywood so you can experience the despicable me, minion, mayhem ride and have a great time. You got two tickets. Okay, well, <laughs> guess we ain't gonna give them to you, Daddy. Oh, he get oh, one? Okay, going. yeah. Boy, this guy. <laughs> hey, Austin, you keep doing a good job, man. Keep showing love. Uh, at the age of eight, uh, he's already a published author with the best-selling book on Amazon. Uh, his, his book is called Kayla and Kyle, The Walking Dictionaries, Election Day. And it was also recently accepted into the Library of Congress. Everybody, please welcome Nicholas Buwama. Hey, Nicholas, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? You, you don't know what it feels like to be a grown man and be talking to a child and, and you don't know how to talk to him because... Oh. Uh, you sc scared he might say something with a big word in you. You don't know what it is. Can I do it right now? Yeah, go ahead. Let me try it. Let okay, me... exacerbate. Exacerbate what? Exacerbate. <laughs> exacerbate. Well, just take one guess of what it means. I'll tell you what it means. It means to make a situation worse. Yeah, that's what it'll do. <laughs> yeah. Say it again. Exacerbate. Okay, but who you hollering at, though? What do you mean, like, who I'm hollering at? I like you, man. Uh, being smart is a, is a great gift to have. I know. I didn't get that gift when I was growing up. But you are smart. Well, I appreciate you saying that, man. Yeah. I'm smart about a couple of things, you know, like... Like, big words, I'm not really good at big words. I never, I never, I didn't have this book. See, if I'd have had this book when I was a kid, I'd have knew some big words. Like, watch this right here. Standing in front of the mirror with it. Innate. <laughs> you ain't even read it. How you know that? <laughs> I can memorize the book. Okay, let me ask you this. I heard you got a pretty big goal for yourself. What is that? My goal is to get my book into every elementary school library in the United States. Let's go and to work. Let's I, go to work. I have some more goals. Huh? I have two more goals. Oh, you got two more goals. And another one is to donate some books to take to Ghana to give to their schools and libraries. Okay. And another one is to get um, enough um, subscribers for my YouTube channel because I'm doing a 30-second word. It's where I'll teach you a word in 30 seconds or less. Okay, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. How, how many of these books do you wanna put in Ghana? 555. Since you're such a smart kid and you're trying real hard, I'm gonna buy 555 books and we're gonna put them in the school of Ghana. How about that? All right? Deal. Yeah. Please welcome gymnast Avery Mitchell. Hey, Avery, how you doing? Welcome to the show. You know, uh, most people would say, look, I only got one leg. I can't possibly be a gymnast. W when you think about your situation, your disability, what goes through your head? Well, if you really just put your mind to it and you think you can do it, you can if you have one leg, two legs, one arm, two arms. If you put your mind to it and you say you can do it, you can do it. What do you want to be when you, when you get older? Well, I would like to be a physical therapist, but I also want to compete in the Olympics. Really? <laughs> so do you watch gymnastics all the time? Yes, yeah. well, as often as I can. Who's your favorite gymnast? Lori Hernandez. Lori Hernandez. Oh, I met her before. Yeah, I've actually met her before. She's a real nice lady. We were shooting on the same lot 
where they were shooting uh, Dancing with the Stars. Did you see her on Dancing with the Stars? Yeah, I don't know. Why, why do you look up to Lori so much? I don't know. She just does everything so perfectly, and she also has a lot of personality when she does stuff. Really? Yes. You are just too sweet, you know that? <laughs> Everybody, please welcome 2016 Olympic gold medalist, Lori Hernandez. Hey, Lord. Good so to see you again. again. Hey, darling. Hello, my dear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at, both of us are kind of shaky, aren't we, huh? Yeah? <laughs> so nice to meet you. Look at your medals. That is something else. I was listening to your story back there. You were just so inspiring. So thank, thank you. you. This is so cool. This is really cool. <laughs> and she turned around and went, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come here, come here. Oh, so nice to meet you. <laughs> Lori, let me ask you something, darling. When, when you watch Avery, do you think she has what it takes to be a champion? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that you've used this as an advantage for you, that is already a change in perspective. I mean, you have the mindset of a champion. That's all that matters. <laughs> You can shoot, take a deep breath, you're good. You're just shaking. You just, <laughs> Whenever I get nervous, uh, you get butterflies because of a lack of oxygen. It just really? leaves your body, yeah. And so what you got to do is, to calm the nerves is, you have to take very deliberate, deep breaths. Mm -hmm. You got to blow it out purposefully and pull it in. Because your body gets so tense, it quits breathing. And then that's when your body just starts tripping. You said tripping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's cool. Come yeah, on. That's a, yeah. That's a, that's a regular word in my vocabulary. <laughs> oh. So, Avery, what would you like to say to your hero? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've always been an inspiration to me, and I've always wanted to meet you. Oh! Yeah. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and you're also about to host uh, American Ninja Warriors Junior. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> well, what about this? What do you think of Avery maybe taking a shot at becoming American uh, Ninja Warrior? Yes, totally. You could totally do it. Oh my goodness. Boy, you got every, every little bone in her body shaking right oh. now. <laughs> I'm just feeling, hang in there, girl. It's all right. <laughs> hey, listen, we, we're going to take a quick break, but we have a balance beam here. Y'all want to see Avery in action? <laughs> hey, don't go away. We'll be right back, y'all. I want you to check out this kid from Minneapolis who isn't letting anything or anybody stop him from pursuing his dream. Okay. Here's one. Thank you. Back in 2016, Jaquan Faulkner dusted off his uncle's old hot dog grill and decided he was going to spend his summer working. Well, I started and I just didn't do nothing with it. And then I realized that I enjoyed it, and so I kept going. But just as Mr. Faulkner's old-fashioned hot dogs was taking off, someone put in a complaint with the health department. That's when Neon came. Neon, the Northside Economic Opportunity Network, provides training and support for underserved entrepreneurs like Jay Kwan. They said, we'll, we'll help you get the license and everything. Uh, if, if you have any questions, just come down and talk to us. Instead of shutting him down, Neon and the health department helped the 13-year-old get everything he needed to pass the inspection, even paying for his permit. This whole story came about because someone reported this kid for selling hot dogs without a permit. Just let me say this. Stop calling on kids that ain't hurting nobody. <laughs> ain't you got nothing else to do? But this actually turned out great. Because when, when a hater try to stop you, what they don't know is what the plan is. So you saw on the tape, after they reported him, he had to go down there to the place. Well, the guys liked him so much, and all the people down there, they got behind him and just started helping him. 
get the correct permits and all like this. They didn't shut him down. They showed him how to be bigger. So the whole community rallied behind this kid because they went, wow, what is that right there? So let, let, let me ask you this right here. What's your favorite part about selling hot dogs to people? <clears throat> My favorite part about selling hot dogs to people is when they come up and I, I'm able to greet them with a smile. Most important part about having a business is customer care. And that's when yeah. they want to be treated as a, as a family. <laughs> this little dude right here is smart. I love that. Look, okay, let me tell you this. You're doing pretty good, man. You done got legitimate. I, I also know that business costs can get expensive. So our friends at Conagra, who are famous for their Hebrew national hot dog brand, they heard all about the great work that Jaquan is doing, so they want to make sure that you continue to grow your hot dog business. So uh, they want to give you $10,000, man. <laughs> $10,000. Well, I tell you what, let me take this for a minute, man, because I need to hook you up with one of my friends. He happens to know a little bit about business and success. From Shark Tank, everybody welcome my buddy, Damon John. So proud of you. What's up, What's up David? brother? How you so doing? Boy, how you feeling? All right. What's happening? So I have a surprise for you. So we called up my buddies over at Hammaker Schlumberger, and we have for you right now a hot dog stand. Your own very hot dog stand. There you go. Look at it. Oh! Yeah. Now, now, now don't take that $10,000 and put no rims on it. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't take that 10,000 and put rims on it. Yeah. But it, it's, really, it's really, really important, and I think that that's important for you. And I wanted to personally also give you something to further your education, because, you know, when school ends, the education doesn't stop. Life is about series of learning. So what I want to give to you is a brand new laptop. Hey. Yeah. Thank you. That is for school, inside and outside. I also loaded that with my entrepreneurial course called Damon On Demand Forever. Yeah. It's yours. And we're very, very proud of you. Thank man, you, Steve, that's for giving so me good, this opportunity, man. No, man, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool, Dad. Uh, the story I'm about to share from you, I actually got from one of my greatest friends, Cedric the Entertainer. He called me and he told me about this guy. So he's a remarkable teen from Kansas City, Missouri who's been getting bullied for designing wigs. At 15 years old, he's already so talented that people are paying for his work. So please give a warm welcome to Trenton Lee. How you doing, Trent? How you doing? <laughs> so, I heard you met uh, Cedric the Entertainer. How was that? That was amazing. Cedric really helped me. He told me just not to give up. He told me to follow my dream. And that's why I'm here right now. Yeah, that's how I started. Said yeah. called me and he told me that you're really quite a big deal on Instagram and that you were even invited to the Bronner Brothers International Hair Show. <laughs> how was that for you, man? Oh my gosh, that was just amazing because I got to see all the best hairstyles in the game and then I got to see how the industry is and it's just amazing, I loved it. So how were you when you started doing hair? I started doing hair when I was around 12 years old, but Funny story, I used to swing around toilet paper. What you mean? I, sw I swinged around toilet paper and I imagined that it was hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> now let me ask you this. When did the bullying begin? In kindergarten, because the kids realized that I wasn't going outside and playing football and basketball, but I was staying back in and doing hair. And that's when kids would call me names and all the way up, kids have been really mean and nasty to me because of what I like to do and, my, and what my passion is. Yeah. But, see, that's your gift. You know? So listen, man, I heard about this, so I wanted to do something special for you. I've got a friend that I want you to speak with. He's a celebrity hairstylist 
who's worked with everybody, including Lupita Nyong'o, Serena Williams, Deborah Messing, and Michelle Obama, to name a few. And Oprah loves him, too. Please say hello to the one and only Ted Gibson. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Steve Harvey, I'm talking to you in Trenton. What a great day it is. Hey, Ted, Ted, thank you so hey. much for doing this, man. You know what? I'm just so pleased and amazed. Trenton, great job. You know, I totally 100% understand where you're coming from. You know, as a military kid growing up in Texas, and my dad, you know, didn't want me to play with hair either. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But, you know, I know the thing that is the most important is that you just remember who you are. It is important to surround yourself with people who believe in you, who understand what you want to do, um, who, who really want to put you up on a pedestal to make sure that you can succeed in every possible way. And I think, you know, congratulations to you because I believe that you have found your way where most people in their life never, ever find it. So yeah. I just want to say congratulations. Thank you very much, Ted. You're welcome. You know, Steve, before you go, you know, I have these really incredible things, right? We have two surprises for Trenton. Can we talk about those really quickly? One second. Yeah. What? Is that really Ted Gibson? Like, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Me. I just... <laughs> Thank you, Trenton. That's hold so hold wonderful. Ted, hold you know, on. Ted, hold on, hold on, Ted. Okay. You ain't hear right. the intro. <laughs> well, I said I got a surprise for you, the one oh and only Ted God. Gibson. Five minutes later, is that Ted? Oh, my God. Thank you, Ted. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, you know, we have two surprises for you, Trenton. The first surprise is you're going to come back to Los Angeles. You're going to study with Jason Bakke, who is a celebrity colorist, and myself, we're gonna give you a day of education. We're thrilled to bring you back in 2019 so we can continue this journey with you. And also, we have a really fantastic thing that we're going to give you. We have a new product that we just launched called Starring. The brand is Starring by Ted Gibson. This product is called Shooting Star Texture Meringue. You're gonna love it. I'm so blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve, Trenton. I can't wait to meet you, and we'll see you soon. See you in Los Angeles. Thank you, Ted. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> Your mom is in the audience, uh, Janina. How does all this make you feel? Um, you know, this has indeed been a whirlwind, and I am just so proud of him that he has taken a talent and he's helping save lives, and it's his medicine. It's what keeps him going. Yeah. See, you know, I read something one time that said, most people hate you because of the reason people love you. Yeah. And what you're doing with these wigs and stuff, like your mom said, is changing people's lives. You're not a football player, basketball player, so what? I ain't either. Now I could play with the boys, but I didn't qualify being no league or nothing. <laughs> you know, like I can catch a football right now, but if you running at me to tackle me, here. <laughs> want this ball? Yeah. Uh, after being teased at school for their natural hair and with the help of their stylist, they band together to send a message that it's people's attitudes, not their hair, that needs fixing. What inspired you to post this video? Well, I saw a video on um, social media where a young man um, actually got turned away from school because he had locks. So it inspired me to reach out to the people in my neighborhood, in my city, to ask if we had the same issue in our community. And it turned out we had a bigger issue of kids actually being bullied because of their natural hair. So I invited the girls out for an empowerment, and it took off from there. Well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So, come on, yeah. It's very common to be teased. What, what's some of the negative things that people say about your natural hair? They'll say that it's nappy, you can't comb it out. And also, like, people will touch it and say that it's fake, assuming that it's fake, and say, is this real? Yeah, it's real. <laughs> Brooklyn, what's your response been since the video came out? 
Well, the responses was that, oh, you did a great job on the video and that you, you know that you're beautiful and you should always think that. Yeah, you should. Because you look so fly with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let me ask you a question. Well, what is it about natural hair that's the most misunderstood? That it's not professional. It's like a hard look. They want you to soften your look, silk your hair out to be accepted. Um, the beauty of it. It's not beautiful. So we're trying to change that to say that our hair is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, no matter what. What advice would you give to people watching at home who would like to go natural? Embrace yourself. Embrace your natural hair. Love yourself. You gotta love yourself. You know what? This year, I embraced the natural me. You know, I'm 61 years old. I'm oh so fly. You're beautiful. That's who you are. The beauty starts from within. I wake up every day, I say, man, you got it going on. Let's go make it happen today. The really, really good friend of the show, uh, actress uh, Yvette Nicole Brown, uh, she heard about you all. And she was so moved by your story that she sent this message. Watch this. Hey, ladies, it's Yvette Nicole Brown here. Steve told me you were coming and the only reason you're not looking at me is I'm working in Savannah, but I wanted to take the time to send this video to let you know that everything about you is absolutely perfect, just as it is. Your hair, your little smiles, your sense of humor, your intellect, everything about you is perfect, just the way it is. Don't let anyone tell you any different. All right? Love you guys. Bye. All right, yes. Hey, uh, girls, so. listen. To all of you, we got a little surprise for you girls. Uh -huh. We reached out to our friends over at Curls. It's a great natural hair care brand uh, whose organic products help enhance your natural hair. So they're giving you each a year's supply of the new Curls Cashmere and Caviar Collection. All right. <laughs> Cashmere and Caviar Collection. Look at that. <laughs> I love you, y'all some good. Ask them one more time, one, two, three. And I'm black. You better know it, bam. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, you made it to the end of this video. I got a lot more that you're gonna enjoy, so just click to watch the next one. And make sure you subscribe to always know what's happening.